Hey everybody, welcome to Ask the Anabolic Doc, starring Dr. Thomas O'Connor, brought to you by his websites, metabolicdoc.com and anabolicdoc.com, both of which you can pick up your copy of America on Steroids, A Time to Heal, also available on amazon.com. I hope I'm talking loud enough because you people are complaining, you can't hear you, Harris. You're a little soft-spoken wuss. Rawr! There we go. So, I'm hyped up, Doc. Why? Because I'm, st yeah. I'm stealing another one of your videos. That's why. <laughs> because you just did a video on one of my all-time favorite uh, steroids, Equipoise. Wow. Equ Equipoise is lovely. It's delicious. Everybody loves Equipoise. Uh, a lot of people, anyway. But, uh, you know, you, you did some great research, as you always do on these things. And I learned uh, a few things about it that I did not know. I did not realize this this steroid was patented by Seba in 1949. Good Lord. It was the first steroid, I think. Wow. Before, before Dianabol. Right. Because Dianabol was late late 50s? Or late 50s, early. All those drugs were like from 59 to like 64. So this preceded all those by well over a decade. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't catch, was it originally developed for humans or no? So when they came out with it, it was initially for humans. They were trying to find all these permutations and combinations, right, mm -hmm. on how to, like, you know, get a better oral and how to injectable to keep it around longer. And then it wasn't to the D-ball was the classic one where, where they, they went back to the drawing board because they saw the injectable must have been, sus must have been suspension. And maybe this drug, maybe this drug actually, that it was used and they were having BPH, those urinary symptoms. Yeah. And they, were, they thought, they, they somehow knew, which this is incredible to me, they knew the androgenic over the anabolic aspects, right? Mm -hmm. So they started tweaking the molecules for the oral and for the injectable form based on androgenicity. I mean, this is, you can't argue it. This is like, isn't that nuts? They knew... This is before I was born. Like this is back in the forties and fifties, and it was so organic chemistry was so rudimentary back then because we didn't have the computers and the spectro, you know, the spectroscopy stuff. Yeah. And they were they just were geniuses, and they were working on it. And how were they how were they even isolate a molecule to know that it's reproduce? And then the double bonds, and then you know they were. But they no, no computers, nothing yet. This is crazy. I swear, I can't even. I don't even. I'm not a chemist. I remember going through chemistry and organic chemistry in med school, pre med, mm -hmm. and like thinking this is pretty crazy stuff. But these guys just they they just inherently knew they had some re reagents. They had some basic tests where they were able to differentiate one molecule from another, and they could move and select. This is a double bond hydroxyl group, the 17 alpha alkyl. They started messing. They just pressure, you know, it's all these laws of physics and chemistry. Pressure changes. They put it in with other agents and reagents. And these are mad scientists, steroid mad. But they did. That was the, what Equipoise was actually, for a very short period, it was, I forgot, the par, par, Paragon, Paragon. I, I wrote in, it. I, in your video, I, I should direct everyone to your video because that's where you're going to get all the actual history and the science and the chemical the chemical structure is, you know, Dr. Tom's video. So go to Anabolic Doc channel on YouTube for his Equipoise video if you really want to get all the... It's really cool. The so, so, so they did, Ron, they actually patented, they had the injectable human form of Equipoise that, like, on the market for only a couple years. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't because of politics. It was well before the steroids and the, even the 60s and the 70s. This, the anti steroid doping stuff that didn't happen to the 70s forget the 90s the 90s is when they had you know the real laws came into effect but they I, I don't I don't know I mean and then it went it went into manufacturing don't quote me on this but in the 70s it started going it just directly went right into the horse <laughs> where it is I today I wonder, wonder what how that happened where this was a drug boldenone developed for human use with pretty much the same applications as you know, all steroids basically have the same medical uses. They're used for the same oh. same conditions. But I wonder who the who the person was who said, you know, that old steroid boldenone. Yeah. I bet that would make our horses run faster. <laughs> and, and and you said, I think you said it in the video that they discovered maybe someone just decided let's let's put it in a horse and see what happens. Swear it increased their appetite. It made them want to run. Ron, so, li so listen to this. I mean, in my days, in my travels of being the anabolic doc, yeah. 
I met some, and I'm meeting, I meet some pretty crazy people all around the world, you know that. But I mean, remember, I'm from New York City, and I, I, I did a lot of work in Westchester County, mm-hmm. and that's adjacent to Greenwich, Connecticut, and Greenwich is famous for money, oh. and money, and, and, and polo, yeah. and racehorses go hand, so I, back in the day, we used to go to some gyms in Westchester on the border of like in Fairfield County. And I remember literally sitting in the sauna. Yes, we were naked and I was jacked up and we were sitting there and t- I met a horse trainer that was telling me how much of a dick. Who's the guy who broke his neck? Christopher Reeves. Oh yeah. And he was like telling me about Reeves. I don't know if this is before or after. It must've been after he broke his neck, but he was telling me and then all the t- horse. So I, I met a lot of horse trainers and then later in my life, because I'm a doctor, I've taken care of like some wealthy people that own horses and jockeys and trainers. I'm telling you, they've told me that this drug, I, I assume it's banned for many years now in, hor- in the horse world, but they said this, this, this was a mu- And I wish people comment on this. Anyone who could tell us the truth about this, it's a, like, how do they use it? They just like juiced up the horses on on equipoise and they just like obviously blew everyone out of they were eating and they were like and they were just like i mean the, the horse i mean i would love to hear the stories but i did hear stories about the equipoise because it was the most common wind stroll and then their injuries you know for the horses and they some of the trainers told me i remember that it would, they thought it was really unethical because the horses would just get so blown out hmm. you know because they would run so hard it's interesting you say there's probably been i mean i I wasn't aware that they did any kind of drug testing for, you know. Oh, I think they do, right? Competitive can, animals. Can, please, can someone please help us with this? I believe that racehorses like, you know, Saratoga and like Kentucky, I believe, Ron, those horses are pretty well drug tested, but maybe I'm wrong. So they developed this drug, but it was mainly for, you know, horses aren't like, a, a, we don't breed them for food or anything, at least not in this country. So. <laughs> It was specifically a performance-enhancing drug for for horses. I mean, it, it was patented by that whatever that com- whatever company patented it because the patent kept expiring. I think multiple. It went through like I, I list all the companies and remember the Fort Dodge. Remember the Wyeth Fort Dodge. Yeah, that was that, that was the brand name Equipoise, right? That was the big one, Wyeth. Before I believe it went to someone else, Squib, then Fort Wyeth Squib. And then it went, in the end, it's still owned by Pfizer today, Equipoise. Wow. And what are they doing with it? Nothing, I imagine? I swear to God, Ron, if I didn't have more time, I, I just sp- I spend like three or four hours researching this on top of everything that I already know. Yeah. And I pull it all together. I research on my research. I talk to a few people. And then I just put the camera on. <laughs> You're still going to get bitched out. You still do get bitched out in the comments. If you make one little error, like, ha, you moron, didn't you know it was 1971, not 1972? Oh. But, uh, yeah. As long as I get the chemistry right, though, I, I mean, because I'm trying to, like, it's always about, I try to elucidate, like, it went from this, and then they put an ester on it, and because of that, it causes this. I don't know. It's cool. It's really cool chemistry. So, chemistry-wise, let's, I mean, what is it most, what other steroids is it similar to, or is it really unique? You tell me, Ron. Come on. Well, this is, I used, I always use it, but I did, I did not do a lot of research. I didn't. Oh, you, I always used it as a instead of Deca. I would stack it with Test. So, so, but it's injectable D ball, and I, I we're going to get a lot of. Con- this is going to be a big video. Put a lot. Put put some good stuff on this, Ron. Oh, we got a horse like going bearing his teeth. Horse, I know that. Put it like a like a you know a, a, a syringe out of his butt. But I'm telling you because this. So it is. And again, I did the, my research with my gurus that I have. I have access to my own gurus, right. some of the best in the world, probably some of our friends. Yeah. So. So they, I go, well, I asked a couple of guys, I actually was seeing in the clinic, I go, so I'm doing my video on equipoise, give me something, what you think. He goes, this is injectable D-ball. That's really interesting. And why? If you take the ester off and you put in an alpha alkylated part because it's an oral drug, mm-hmm. this, the compound, the chemical structure, yeah. the bovinone is dianabol. Wow, but that's, that's especially interesting because there was an injectable version of Dianabol, probably still is, that, you know, when I lived in California, we used to get a lot of the veterinary drugs out of Mexico, and there was one called Reforvit B, and it was mostly D-ball, and they throw in, like, a little B vitamin, so it's now it's healthy, you know, it's, oh it's my vitamin God. too, but 
you know, you had a picture, it had a picture on the, on the bottle of like a horse and a goat and a, a cow. And, um, it was 50 milligrams from, it, it was weak. It was 50. A lot of the vet stuff, I hated it because of the, the potency was so low. It was like 50 milligrams per ml. So you had to, you had to inject all of it, which is probably why my ass got so big. Um, yeah, it's just all that oil over time. But that's interesting because it was probably, the, if injectable D-ball and boldenone are the same or very, almost identical, then there was probably no point in. But here's the deal, though. So guys, when I said that, some comments, I think they were actually pretty nice to me, though. They were like, I understand. Everyone knows it's this. I mean, the, the, what guy, the guys that come out of the woodwork are so amazing because they're so smart. It is like that. But because of the functional group differences, it's nothing like dying, dying, inject. It's not really, Doc. But we understand why you're saying that, but it's not. And it's more like DECA, but it's not a NOR-19 derivative, right? Right. So, it's a it's, so that's both. odd, that because it, as far as the anabolic androgenic scale, it's more similar to DECA, right, where it's much further over on the anabolic end of the spectrum. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't a complete moron by stacking it with testosterone. No, I mean, this, but, but, but hold on, but T, T, you know, it's kind of new, but now, now it's, it's test and aquaport. It just rolls off the tongue, test. So when I do my histories, so what were you on? Yeah. Uh, test equipoise, test, it's always test, and it's just, it's a common, it's a classic combination, and I, I, go on with your, I have a question, I mean, go, you go on with your questions, because I have something in the end, I learned some stuff that, like, I learned when I read about everything, and I, I'm not going to lie to you, I use Llewellyn's book, Llewellyn's book is incredible, yeah. that's like my base, I use that, and then I read on some, on the internet, and then I have notes, and I talk to some guys, and then I just put my, I just, I just roll the camera and just go for it. It's really fun. The I, I don't really have too many. It's not so much questions as comments because you, you pointed out in the video the unique qualities of boldenone or uh, equipoise or as we call it in the uh, juice head world, EQ for short. Um, one, of the, one of the main reasons people wanted it and wanted to use it was for the, the quality that it increased your appetite, made you hungry. And a lot of people, uh, they train very hard, but their gains are always limited because they don't have the appetite. In wow. the recent years, I've seen... Since these peptides came out, uh, I, I've never used the peptides. I just didn't see the point. But a ton of guys I know will use this GHRP6 injectable peptide specifically to enhance their appetite. Many, many more people that I know will just use marijuana for the same reason, to just to boost their appetite. You know, you get high too, which is a nice bonus. But it, it's hard for a lot of guys to eat enough food to really pack on muscle because the body does not want to add muscle. It's always fighting you always wants to that homeostasis stay like you are stay like you are so to really jack up your calories and be able to take in 400 grams of protein a day and a thousand grams of carbs a day oh yeah i did that all i did that for many many years. thousand so, grams of carbs i don't do that anymore but uh, uh that was probably a, that was an average day high days would be more than that but yeah that's that's why they wanted equipoise and it worked i remember when i was when i was on equipoise it would take a good week or two to kick in because it's a longer acting ester but immediately I was like, okay, now I'm, um, it's two hours and I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat again. Whereas before I was like, oh crap, I'm not even hungry, but I'm supposed to eat again now. So yeah, I mean, I'm just curious because I've never heard that about any other steroid. See that? Yeah. And so I, and, why? And that, why? And that wasn't like, see, that was, I got that input from my, my patients and my gurus. Hmm. So it was just, and it wasn't really else to anywhere I saw, but I think I had some of the blogs I saw it. So here's the deal, and you see what I said in the video? There's some guys, you know, I've seen patients over the years, almost 20 years, because I've been, I mean, I'm the anabolic doc for 10 years, but I've been involved with steroids, you know, around myself and the, the community since 19, I mean, really late 80s and 90s, because I'm 54, I've been lifting since 13, like everyone else. So I've seen so many guys have ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, which is inflammatory bowel, and then there's there's no one no one's gonna isolate one steroid, but so many guys use test and EQ and I don't know, it's it's a hypothesis I have, but I do have one patient, and if he's listening, you know, he's not a patient, but I did a consult and I, I Skyped him, you know, I talked to him somewhere in the I won't even say what state, but he did equipoise and I, and he did some other steroids. He's a young man, he's he was like, I don't know, nineteen to twenty one or twenty three. Mm -hmm. He did steroids for a couple of years. He really had a great response and he was pretty you know conservative with it then he 
Then he did equipoise. And according to him, within 24 hours, he's had these stomach, and I talked about it in the video, he had these stabbing stomach pains. And ever since then, this poor man has been suffering massive depression and pain syndromes. He's had upper GI workup from the top to the bottom, pill endoscopies. And he does, I, I heard the last, because he's, he's in touch with my office, he emails us ongoing. I mean, I have so much incredible things I'm working on. And he has, he has ulcers in his, and I believe in the, in the, in the mid jejunum or small bowel, not in, the, not in the colon and not on the upper. So when you, when you do the colonoscopy and the endoscopy up top, there's a lot of small bowel in the middle. If they want to visualize that apart from a CT scan, if they want to see the inside, they give this pill camera endoscopy and it goes through and they develop, did you know that? There's a pill and it's, it's old. It's been around for over 10 years or 15 years. And they, 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 it take it as you, as you eat it, right. It goes through your, your belly. Of course you shit it out. You pit, you give it to the lab and they develop the pictures and they get to look inside cause it's tumbling through. It's taking all these pictures. Gosh. So the kid ended up this man ends up having, he's a kid. I mean, he's a young man. Yeah. Um, and so, Look Just from one shot of equipoise. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So, you know, I'm so I'm gonna be so careful what I say. I mean, it's is one thing turn out to have like, you know, <clears throat> as a physician, it's like you, you don't put someone down for that, right? I don't I don't say no. You're you know dumb. I mean, I it's so easy to take business away from these doctors because they're just a bunch of frankly they're just forget how much you know that if you're an asshole that's not going to be a good thing if you're not a nice loving person you're just you know it's called bedside it, manner that's I'm, trying, manner. I'm just trying to say i mean i'm just trying to be politically correct like i mean these guys it's he, i'm not here to tell the guy that that's not no one knows but he's he did equipoise and his stomach went into and it's two years later the guy obviously has some he's running there's some severe gi issue and now depression so it's it's such a horrible and i feel so sorry for this poor person but the truth is then I thought to myself, looking at the Alcapoise study and getting ready to to do go could go live, and I'm thinking about what I say. It does hit the GI tract. Guys are hungry. It makes appetite makes the horse eat. That was the plan. So it's hitting receptors. Your brain and your gut are tied together. No, no, I'm not shocking anyone. Anyone who knows irritable bowel, not inflammatory, but irritable bowel, who has depression if you're sick to your stomach. There's receptors between your brain. The, the paleontology of our development goes back millions of years. We developed kind of, we kind of climbed out of the, 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 the ocean. The primordial the, ooze. The, come on, Rob. I was going to say primordial. You got it. So it's like, you know, the, we still have salt water. There's still primordial stuff. Your brain is connected to your guts for reasons why they're obvious for protecting you and it's so intimate. So people... When, if this drug is affecting the central nervous system because a special molecule of equipoise on desolate, boldenone on desolate, yeah. has its factors and it, every, all these steroids have little particular right features. Trend is not Anivar. I mean, so boldenone hits and it does something with the gut either on the receptors, serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine. I, I really sound, I say the same thing all the time because it's all I know. It seems like I really know this stuff. I, I really feel like I actually know nothing. And but the gut is lined with it. It's tied to the brain. And all these so many men on steroids, it appears like some of them have ulcer of colitis and Crohn's, it, which is oh, this is inflammatory bowel. But then again, people get people just get inflammatory bowel, and then actually they take steroids and they tell me, Doc, I actually felt much better. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I, I mean, so in the end. There's something with the appetite, and there's something with equipoise to to the GI tract. I mean, Ron, yeah. right? So I just thought it was interesting to to bring out. I wonder. I'm just throwing it out there. What's is hunger? Is leptin the hunger hormone? Yeah. Well, yeah. So leptin. I'm no GI guy, but leptin comes out of the small bowel. It's liberated. It's around the pancreas and that whole duodenal area. Could equipoise stimulate more leptin production? Well, I don't know. You know, leptin is a tricky thing. Is it? I think leptin may go up, and then when you're satisfied, it shuts down the satiety, so your appetite goes down. Wow. So maybe it blocks the leptin receptors in your brain, and then your 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 brain runs everything. The hypothalamus and above and around that region is is these nuclei. They're called for sex, for dopamine, drugs, no, and nicotinic receptors, smoking, but you know, booze, the drive, animal receptors, hunger. 
sex. So th that's where these things hit. So there's no question that there's a relationship with that. If you eat, if some people, I mean, there's no question that the study of obesity, those unfortunate individuals, they, 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 drug, food is a drug for them, Ron. They, they, eat too, they can't, there's such a, a, a disengagement between the satiety center of the brain and the GI tract that they just keep eating. Mm -hmm. And guys like, you know, here, and you just telling me this, I'm thinking, I didn't even, wasn't even aware bodybuilders, I mean, it's a pro, imagine telling some poor obese person, it's a problem that this poor guy has to force himself to take like a thousand, and some people are trying to take a hundred, less than a hundred grams a day to, to do like keto, I know keto's less than 25, everyone, yeah. but I mean like, but, but I call it near keto, and I live with like less than 100 grams of carbs. Now my girlfriend, my honey's laughing at me because I don't. But, <laughs> but I, Not when you go to Florida anyway. You know it. So, so, but I tried, so it's like in this, Ron, you're telling me a thousand, like a it's, thousand. It's not unheard of, no. I mean, that's I, great. I, well, I force fed myself for many years. I wouldn't, if I, if I did that now, I'd be a big bloated pig. So if I, and I've seen pictures of you as a young man. You, you have, you would just have great genetics. You're just a lean Small guys, genetic. I didn't want. Well, that's to. what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I was not meant to be a large person, so I spent my entire 20s force feeding myself. Oh my god! Most, I was drug free the whole, most of the most of my 20s, but I still, I force fed myself far more food than my body needed. Oh, so crazy! I gained a lot of body fat. I would diet down over and over and say, "Huh, why? Why? I thought I'd be bigger than this, but I was just gaining fat." But then with all the steroids, I mean, Ron, you're an interesting specimen uh, experiment. Yeah, they should do a study on me. But uh, the other quality that was unique to uh, equipoise as compared to most of the other steroids is the increase in red blood cell production. Did yeah. It seemed to have a much more pronounced effect on that than most of the other steroids you've looked into. So I'm going to launch off to Mobius. So when I was putting this together, I thought so many guys come in and when they – when they know about the red cells, hey doc, you know, I'm donating in my red cells and you know, I'm careful with the equipoise. De Everyone knows doc, right? E test combinations, DECA equipoise jacks up the red cells. So other drugs do it too, but it's definitely true that those drugs are very pronounced to cause that erythrocytosis and the polycythemia. Of course, there's so many other variables on guys, but in the end of the day, when I thought of that, and then I thought, the other thing I said was the kidney failure, the, which you, you probably may go into next. I thought there's something with steroids we know, hit, we know that we know this. Steroids hit the receptors in the kidney and you increase EPO, yeah. EPOGEN. And then the, the increased EPO cause your, your, your bone marrow to just start producing more red blood cells. That's a no, we've, Decadrabalin does it. Yeah. You know, to, we, from the back to the 50s and 60s, it was used for that for anemia and, and anemia of chronic kidney disease. Now we have straight up EPO. Yeah, so, but I'm saying red blood cell production, you'd want it for performance, uh, especially like endurance athletes, they would definitely want cool. more red blood cells. Yeah, so Armstrong, I don't know, he probably loved it. I mean, if he wasn't busted on it, long acting Esther. Yeah, but I mean, uh, for bodybuilder, bodybuilders, I would, I would imagine, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the benefit of that, you'd have greater blood volume or just the same volume of blood, but it would be thicker. Well, I don't want to launch off the Mobius in this because talking about the hematological aspect of polycythemia, erythrocytosis, I was doing it an hour ago with a man who has Wegner's granulatosis and I'm working with hemato. I mean, I could go off to Mobius on you. It's not that, and there's no, ready for this? Yeah. There's no data to support that if you have polycythemia that is, well, that's the wrong word. If you have increased red blood cells, which every man testosterone steroids has to some degree, right. but if it's less than, let's just say, 18 grams per deciliter on hemoglobin, there's no data to say that you're going to have any pronounced uh, disease of a stroke or heart attack. I'm telling you right now, I, this is all I do. I, I work, I'm working with hematologists, I don't know, Ohio State, I mean, UCLA right now, Columbia University, open, I'm sending... I don't, I don't want to say the doctor. No, I'll say it, Dr. Bombach. I'm saying Dr. And I'm sending Dr. Andrew Bombach uh, one new uh, kidney disease patient with FSGS or proteinuric or kidney disease from steroids every month or two. So those, and then, then I have my hematologies that I see. So there, it, it, 
the blood gets kind of thicker, but if if what if it's not over 18, there's no doctor in the world that's going to make you a believer or me a believer that it's going to cause a disease. And what's the disease state? A stroke. But it, it's not happening. It doesn't happen. I'm not saying go out, go nuts. I'm just saying I'm just saying that no one could argue me because. There's no data for it. I, I constantly watch the data. So it increases red cells. And, the, and if it goes too much, you're, you're running a potential risk. If you have sleep apnea on top of it, and if you have genetics for hereditary hemochromatosis or polycythemia vir, if you have genetics for all this stuff, that's why I see guys really up, really sensitive. And then we, I, I change it around. I work with hematology guys. I don't, I've never, I've seen a few strokes but I don't know that they were just from red blood cells. Well, let me, I, I know this is a whole subject for another time and place, but this practice that bodybuilders have when they're on cycles of going to donate blood because they're, that's what they're trying. They believe they have too many red blood it's, cells. And they're trying to, you know, this is almost like the medieval times where they, they were uh, bloodletting and leeches, but it's, it's very, very common. You hear, I hear guys say all the time, well, I went and gave blood because, you know. But I'm Ron, hurt. don't do it. So I'm seeing guys now that are coming to me, obviously, on steroids, the common bear. The average guy comes to me, he's 37, steroids for five years or more. That's my average guy right today. I've, and there's a waiting list to come in now. Fuck it, I'm happy to say it. We're, we're expanding, we're expanding, we're expanding. So I gotta try to find some doctors. So, but these guys, I see these guys now, some of them are anemic, their ferritin levels are tanked. It's very interesting. I'm, I'm, I have guys right now. Hey, my guy in Miami, you guys down. Some cool studies. We got some cool stuff. Some of these guys are anemic. They, they're phlebotomizing so much, and they're not. They're, they're, and if they look just at hemoglobin hematocrit, they don't know their ass from the hole in the ground. If you saw, if you look at your total iron levels, your TIBC, iron saturation, and ferritin, you look at those levels. That will tell you really what's going on down deep in your body as far as the, the storage iron levels. It's very complicated. So these men are, are just doing this. They're just phlebotomizing and just randomly and, and so much because a lot of these guys, including all of us, it's get very neurotic, get very neurotic, and they start doing these things they think are going to protect them. Like you said, it's medieval time. Well, let's not discourage them because the Red Cross always needs blood. Especially no, if you have I'm, with, I'm just saying, guys, I'm setting, I'm setting protocols in the world that will be used by healthcare providers in the, now in the future, because you got to come out of the dark. You got to come see a doctor. Maybe you don't need to be phlebotomized, or maybe I do. Phleb I phlebotomize guys, but I have to do it individually, Ron. But you're looking at those levels, and you're only doing it when it's needed. That I, I do. Th I'm very conservative. I try. I you. I try utilizing evidence-based guidelines. But what do I do when there's no evidence-based guidelines? Because no one has evidence for steroid users. So I've, I've, this is why I'm getting kind of loud and obnoxious these days, more than my usual, is because I'm going into like the 10th year. I have thousands and thousands of pay, data bank, you know, full of N equals like thousands now for me. So I have these and I'm look, and then I'm talking to doctors all over the country and the world. So I'm really getting a good consensus of, of what, these are conservative, these are great doctors. Again, man, Ohio State, you know, guys over at the Harvard, guys here at UConn, Yale. Because I, I just call them because I'm representing the patient. Mm. And I've been doing this for over 10 years. So I'm very conservative and very, hey, doc, what are you doing? And I'm finding that the docs, the old the old docs are, are, are definitely pretty much gone. And hey, guys, I'm sorry to put you down, guys. But because they're very aggressive and they didn't know it. You're, you're, but now the younger doctors, you know, from thir 30s to 50s and maybe some guys older, I don't want to be discriminatory, but I'm just just – just saying, yeah. but you know these guys, the young guys. I, I've been ta I talked to two or three doctors today. They're really like, wow, Tom, mm -hmm. whoa. I'm like, look, doc. Let me just tell you, boom, 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 boom. Let's work with this guy. Let's do this. Let's not do that. It's all about heart disease, kidney disease, liver disease, sexual disease, prostate disease. I mean, it's all the same thing over and over and over. That's all I do. It's internal medicine on steroids. I'm getting worried I'm not going to use the phrase I've been waiting to use because it's – I want to say hold your horses at one point. There's nothing uh, has really come up for a oh, while. Well, maybe later. But uh, the one thing that was very frightening in your video about equipoise was the link between equipoise use and the kidney disease 
focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Got it. Let's just say FSGS, <laughs> FSGS, which Flex Wheeler suffers from and almost lost his life to, needed two kidney transplants. Uh, FSGS, so is there a very, very strong correlation between this particular steroid and that disease? No. Oh, good. No, no. J just, here's what I see, because this is, this is big on my radar screen. So here's what you got. FSGS, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, which is definitely a tongue twister, is a, there's, gen remember the moons line up, Ron? What? Remember, remember the moons have to line up. Oh, so, well, there's only one moon, so it's probably, yeah. So we, in my world, there's many moons. So on Jupiter, there are many moons. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's where I'm from. So, you know, here's how it works. You got some genes for it. There has to be, because when you see a bunch of guys that have been doing steroids into their, for 40 years and their kidneys are fine, mm -hmm. and I got them all over the Midwest, West Side Bar, but okay. I mean, these are guys that are just like, I don't know, my kidney's fine. Why is his kidney fine? I don't Then you have guys, so then you have guys that are using steroids. It doesn't take overnight. It does, it's not overnight, but maybe 10 years or 20. And you got a guy who has a gene for FSGS. Now, African American guys, man, you gotta, you gotta be careful. Much more prevalent, right? Number one, forget the steroids, they just have it anyway. Number one. Number two, if you have, if you're hypertensive, mm -hmm. with or without steroids, boom, moon, moon number two. Mm -hmm. Moon number three, throw on steroids, which worsen edema, definitely can cause hypertension, then what I did, even today, I found another man who has proteinuria. That means he his kidney function is normal on the on the blood side on on the comprehensive metabolic, but his kidney function. When I did an when I did a detailed urinalysis, he's just starting to put protein into his urine, and I repeated it two or three times, to on, on the course of like two months, and it's it's not just a fluke, it's real. This man I sent. To, this is the guy that's going to go to Columbia early to Dr. Bombach. And this is going to be an early, and I talked to the chief, who is this fa famous woman, I forgot her name, Italian name, amazing woman who did the study in 2009 with FSGS at Columbia. It was New York Times. She's still there. And I ran the case by her. I'm so humble that she picks up my calls when I call. And she said, this guy you have, you're giving to Bombach, he's definitely going to have it. Wow. Because his kidney function is normal on the serum side, but he, he has two plus protein. Now, this guy's pissing protein. Now, add into that, add into that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. So guys got genetics, hypertension, steroids, mo too much Motrin, and too long not being diagnosed. Hmm. Boom. You're, you're, you're gonna, and I'm telling, I, Ron, I have diagnosed, God, 30 FSGS cases, now 10 years. Ten years. Still, I mean, I, I I never heard of the disease. Not that I'm reading medical journals anyway, but until Flex Flex Wheeler came came down with that, I never heard. Many, of that. many. That term. And if you watch on my videos, you'll see guys in the comments, Doc, I got it, I got it too, I got it too, I got it. What, look at my Joe Ladner. Joe allows me to say it. Joe's a famous guy. He has FSGS, and he's you know we're st he's stabilizing and we're holding him strong. He's a great guy. He allows me to talk about it. He's a patient, and he, he signed all the disclaimers, and he, he has a video of he has He did a video talking about it. He's super power and super 405 for, for 405 for, I think, 40 reps at the end on the animal cage. Oh, so, I believe it. Yeah, the animal cage has some crazy shit going down. Let me tell you. you. Know, and I, I'm, a, I'm an ex-power lifter, even though I was one of the weakest power lifters in the world, but at least that's my little click. And it's like, let me tell you, these guys are big as ass, strong as hell, great genetics, a um, lot of protein, a lot of hypertension, a lot of test and D-ball and Androl, don't need the old school, old school stuff, don't need the fancy, the, no insulin and, and, and peptides. This is, this is where I wanted to ask you because I heard uh, a friend of mine who knows some old school power lifters, some guys who were doing in the 80s and the 90s said they all loved Equipoise. Big time, you, test you, Equipoise. You would know better than I. It wasn't really popular. Oh my God, to the base. So the basic guy that comes in, like the the older, you know, old forty five, you know, your age, a little younger than you, to older. What did he do when I take the history? Test, D ball, Anadrol, Equipoise, 
mm. went straw. That's it. Mm. That's it. I mean, first of all, that, that's enough. I mean, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, I mean, and, and combinations of that stuff. Like I was you just wondering why equipoise would be particularly attractive to them. Was it for the appetite? Was it for the red blood oh, cells? God, Ron, it's easy to get. Mm. It's easy to get. It, they can get the veterinarian stuff. You know, and Winstrol and all this stuff. It's, it's. I don't know. It works. You know what? A, a part, and then the next thing we'll see if you bring it up in your question here. And if you don't, I'll bring it up. Yeah. Is the side effect profile, man? Not too bad, bro. Mm -hmm. For these guys. I mean, right? Well, yeah, I mean, that's. I, I want you to rate it safety-wise, effective, on a on a cost to benefit ratio. How would you rate? Well, I can't. You know, I know you're not giving your blessing. Let's say that right now. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. You're not going to, this is not saying anybody go out and get equipoise and use it, but if you had a patient that says, Doc, I'm going to do steroids anyway, here's what I can, here's what I'm, my guy has uh, available, should I get equipoise as part of my stack or not? Well, you can't, I can't, because if you look for my comments, look what, my, my videos in the comments are the, in the streets, live in the streets. Mm -hmm. Some guys will say, best steroid, no side effect, and they're, they're not bullshitting, they're, right. they're not making, I'm not paying them, they're, they're saying, it, it's and then and then then there's a few there's more than there's more, there's more of those comments than horrible blew out my kidneys blew out my but it, so it's a pretty soft steroid it goes well with testosterone unfortunately guys love it they get high on it I mean the appetite they just it just you know but so the thing that let me see if you're gonna ask a question next is there anything you're gonna ask about what it does to testosterone. I think I, I was I didn't put that in my notes, so no, I was not going to. How this is incredible, and this is a this is again like the horse trainer. This is like the underground stuff, like that. Like Doc, did you know when I when I called the you know my bro science gurus up, you know all over the country, I go what you know I'm getting ready to do, and they said you know what Doc, it increases testosterone levels, and therefore the side effects of it are not really the side effects inherently to equipoise. It's going to be because like equipoise is not really an estrogenic drug, right? Mm -hmm. But why would you take, when you take tests and EQ together, guys get horrible puff with puffiness depending on who they are, how much they do, and they get really bad gyno and, and acne and stuff. So I know that's androgenic, but, but it's the, the equipoise effects. Bill Llewellyn said, I was at some, I was on some little lot chat somewhere with Bill and he was like, guys, you have it all wrong. Like you can't just look at what equipoise or the drugs doing itself it's having an effect on the other androgen, the other steroids with the sex hormone binding glot. So it's increasing. So it everyone knows if it's true or not scientifically, I have no idea. But it equipoise does something the bro science guys think because it increases testosterone levels you're using. When you say that, what do you mean? It, obviously, it's not increasing it's, your body's natural testosterone. No, no, no. It's utilizing. It's utilizing the test you're taking. It's synergistic. And that's what I said in my video. I, I think that's what I tried to say. So it's it, probably, it somehow amplifies the effects of yeah, the testosterone. There's the, both, there's the good, your, both the good and the bad effects, yes, I'm assuming? Yes. Okay. Well, good to know. So it can yeah. turn your 500 milligrams of test into 800 milligrams of test. I'm just, I'm just, I, now that's the comment stuff that I say that's like amazing. This is why I love the show here. I love what I'm doing, prevent, you know, just preventing people from understanding what they're doing and saying, this is like, is this real? Like, wh that's what guys in the underground say. But these comments come from men that have been doing it for decades, Ron. So they're not, and anyone who's listening to this is going to go, not going to say, they may say, oh, I, I don't disagree. That didn't happen to me. But then a lot of guys will go, no, 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 it happened. To and like you and I say, like, don't call us douchebags. We're just trying to bring you the news. <laughs> I just read the news. That's all I do. So if that, if that is true, and if, you know, anecdotally, I believe I, I, there's bro science is based on, you know, many, many thousands of men's anecdotal experiences. Absolutely. absolutely. So if you're out there, guys, it sounds like you could probably get, if you're using test and EQ together, you're probably better off using a little less test than you might have anyway. Wow. It sounds like, and you'll get the same, same results with, but I, I don't know if it's any safer. It sounds like it's not because it's amplifying it, but at least you could save a little money and not, you know, do a gram of test. Maybe you could do five or six hundred. And, and here's and here's and, and like so the thing is in the end guys do PCT no yeah, PCT no PCT PCT they do test steroids over and over every combination you can think of and then in the end they're suppressed and I I gotta they come to me and I they have they have nothing left and I gotta put them on test so it's like is it less suppressive okay 
So who uses equipoise alone except for a newbie or a woman? What? So let's, Ron, you know it's true. I have heard the women using equipoise. Women love, I'm not giving a blessing on this because they can still lose the hair, get the facial stuff and the beard, the, the voice and the and everything down below the belt. Skin so, wig and shave, you're cool. You know, you know, but Ron, I mean, women, I've heard it from countless people, women and the boyfriends, they all come in together to see me. The couples come in. I treat him, but I'll listen to you. I'll listen to you. The door's closed and they go, well, I'm on e equipoise. It's the best drug for women. And I was like, Years ago, I was like, "Wow." Well, because it's 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 by itself, it's it's less androgenic. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Well, that's good to know because a lot of women, the only steroids that they're looking for typically are Anavar and Primavol. And that's right. Very very expensive. Winstrol. Winstrol. Yeah. Hard to get, and unless you have a testing kit, doesn't Bill Llewellyn sell the testing kit? Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, of course. Unless you have his Roy test kit. You don't know if that Primaball and you got is Primaball or, or it's Cypionate or D-Ball or whatever. God only knows. So if that's true, Equipoise is among the safer steroids for women. It's probably a better idea because I don't, I've never heard about a lot of fake Equipoise. It's, it's not something that's so expensive in the raw form that there's much profit margin in faking it. You might as well just sell them real. Like, oh, I can't give a blessing to any of this stuff, but my but my co-host over here, that's that's Ron. That's okay. That's you know, you're in the world. I mean, but I just couldn't believe. I can't believe when I heard women using it, and I was like, well, how's your hair? How's your fine? Actually, better. Than I actually heard this. You know, we have a call, we have a new columnist. You know, Giles is my uh, our UK MD correspondent who does so much for us now. His girlfriend, uh, Rosie Rascal Hart, is a pro, and she coaches women, and she writes a column in MD2, and she mentioned that a few months ago in her column and said, you know, equi equipoise is used, can be used by women, too, and I'm like, huh, equipoise? That was the first I'd ever heard of it. Because they, they don't use it with test. Mm. Well, I, I'd be worried if I was a woman. I hope they don't. <laughs> I'd be worried if there was a woman on test, although I know a lot of them do use it. Bad idea, bad idea. Yeah, yeah. Unless you don't, unless you don't care about the the effects, you know, the andro androgenic effects. Uh, yeah, that is a that's pretty much all the questions I had. I mean, equipoise. I've always I've always enjoyed it. I like the effects of the appetite stimulation because wow. obviously in the off season, a lot of guys that's the limiting factor. They don't eat enough. Wow. So many guys I talk to, whether they're on steroids or not, they just have a hard time putting down that food. And you do need you do need uh, that that calorie surplus to grow. This is a, this is something that does a, it's going to help you grow chemically with the with the reactions it's having on the body and it's going to stimulate the appetite so that's a nice little bonus as far as I'm concerned. Incredible! Everyone else is trying to lose weight in America. <laughs> this guy. Yeah, is... we're the <laughs> we're the reverse uh, the reverse anorexics. We're never big enough. It's true. Know, that, that lovely body dysmorphia. Oh, you guys, see. you guys got something coming out soon. I know there's going to be a nice uh, big orexia on MD. I'm, they're going to put my article. I don't think I'm blowing anything for you guys. It's gonna go. You're gonna publish that out there on the. It's your article, right? Yeah, it's my article, okay, and right, right, right. They're, they're gonna put it. They're gonna make it so it's on the news feed or something, so people could see it on the digital. Oh, on okay, okay. Yeah, that's why. That's why I was looking a little puzzled with you. Like, huh? What are you talking about, Tom? <laughs> yeah. No, it's gonna be good. I mean, it's a great article, and it's just we just got to get the word out there, Ron, on all this. I know you agree with that. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm a yeah. long-suffering uh, bigorexia. Bigorexia. <laughs> so it's amazing. But, uh, okay, well, that has been our discussion on equipoise. Please, for the scientific facts, figures, chemical structure breakdown, we didn't cover that because that's not me. That's Tom. That's Dr. Thomas. Go to Anabolic Doc on YouTube. His equipoise video has all of that and more. And like I said, he's so organized, him and his editor. Who, who puts your videos together? That's Alex. That's Alex. Okay, Alex does a great job. They have a table of contents in the beginning with the times. So you can just click to that part of the video. I mean, how you guys are so damn organized. I, I, I tip my hat to you if I had one. But uh, <laughs> great job, Alex, if you're listening. <laughs> Tell awesome. him, I think he does a great with the thumbnails too. He does a great job with the graphics. This kid's on the ball. I do. The horse picture. I mean, wait till you see the next one we're doing on, on with uh, with a, a bombs. I don't know what he's going to come up with. Anadrol. I'm imagining some kind of a mushroom cloud. Yeah. Right. That's what I would think. We could do something cool with that. That's uh, awesome. Okay. So I want to encourage you guys to check out Dr. Thomas O'Connor's uh, websites again: metabolicdoc.com, anabolicdoc.com. His YouTube channel is called Anabolic Doc. 
so many drug profile videos out, and there's more to come. So you guys, uh, you're, he's, he's fulfilling your, your requests, doing, doing videos on all your favorite steroids. He's almost out of steroids, so I don't know what he's going to do after that. He'll, he's always got something to talk about. Don't worry. And, of course, one last time to remind you, pick up your copy of America on Steroids. It's available on both those websites as well as Amazon.com. If you're picking up some other uh, items on Amazon, might as well get that. You'll learn a thing or two. Dr. O'Connor, thank you, as always, for joining us and giving us straight-up knowledge from a medical point of view, from someone who actually went to medical school instead of all of us bro science meathead wannabes. It's awesome. <laughs> cool. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Ask Deanna Bach Doc, and we'll talk to you next time.